I mean, that list of idyllic, antiquated England of, uh, you know, tea and cakes and cricket, I mean, is, is valid. But I think the things that sum up Englishness, I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war, we love a ruck. Yeah. We built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. Talking of the um, English sense of fair play and war, when um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick. And uh, versus our... Our bowman. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh, it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage? That's honour, isn't it? But uh, what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got, you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. Someone comes along and goes, don't worry about that. Here's a crossbow. Just pop it in, put it back. <laughs> Deadly. Deadly, quick, anyone can use it. So now you've got... Anyone with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. But we did we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's, that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having, having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was, like, sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family, that's, that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. You knew bow and arrow from Ronco. But what, what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The objective is to kill the place, enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all up to about someone cheating or having a better Ooh. system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, it's, it's just about rules, isn't it? No, not in a war there isn't rules. What's it's extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, and that's the one they had a, had a knockabout, so I think they took a you know, game of football. In that. no man's land, yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> <laughs> If I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Which rules would you repeal that already exist, that you don't like? Uh, it's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> <laughs> so fly tipping, you'd like to see more fly tipping. What, what, what just... do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house and just, like, you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was, it was a good way of recycling. Now, they say recycle, but we're not recycling. It's just being put in a bin. I'm saying if you've got old furniture, you should be allowed to leave it outside your house without the council going, move that, it's dangerous, someone's going to trip over it. Mm. Well, if right. they trip over it, it should have been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? What? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over and smack their face in. No, because I'm, I'm leaving it... I'm not leaving it on the, on the pavement. What you just said you were? Where are you leaving it? Sort of... Outside the house. Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind teeth. person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything? Definitely not. They're, they're better on the feet than some people, because they're more cautious, aren't they? So It'd Make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second-hand shop or because send it to Because they don't a come, charity? Steve. Honestly, they, they don't. They I've, I've called up people and they're saying, yeah, we'll be there in an hour, and I say, right, I'm going to put it out on the street, then are you going to come and get it? Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. 
Suddenly just the council all over the place. place. <laughs> on the floor, bloody noses. And the council said, I call them up, do you want to shift it? Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You'll have to stay with it. Suddenly I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? 